Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. In today's video we're going to continue on our journey through the boost libraries. Now in the last video we talked about ASIO and in today's video we're going to talk about boost.assign, the assignment library. Now again we are skipping something here, we are skipping asserts. Um, I'm not a fan of using pre-built asserts, so I need to be honest with you. Uh, since I think asserts are quite a complicated thing, a thing that really depends on how your project is structured and even through a third of boost is kind of customizable i still think that every project should write its own assert macros it's not too hard so yeah we're gonna skip assert and we're gonna go to assign which is also quite a very useful boost library because assign allows you to assign elements to a container in a easy way now uh we are probably only scratching the surface today. I don't want to go too much into the details on uh, how uh, this works, how you can use these multiple versions of assign. I want to go in a bit of a uh, easy approach and just kind of like show you what the general idea is. All right, so uh, let's get started and play a bit around with boost assign. Okay, first things first, let's include boost assign. So boost assign, there it is, assign.hpp. Let's quickly check into that because I am also just going to quickly um, evaluate what's included. So what's included if you're trying to assign. So the standard uh, library header is included, list of and list inserter and assignment exceptions. Like uh, these are like common headers that kind of like help you getting started. You can see if you're taking a look at the peak in the header, uh, um, the boost assign library is implemented for vector, DQ, list, S list, Q, set and map. And if it's including map i would say so that it's probably also going for maybe an unordered map no it's just a map interesting we're gonna see if an unordered map works we're just gonna try it out um okay so let's uh play a bit around with uh boost um assign so let's start with a std vector now we want to create a vector of let's say integers now the vector that i'm going to call i'm going to call them ints so these are the integers and how do i now assign elements to the container well you could of course go and do it with an initializer list right this would be kind of obvious and say all right, that's how I want to do it. However, this might not be feasible because the ins vector could actually be filled with uh, different methods. So there could be like a method called void user set a, and there could be a void user set b. So depending on like a user input, something that you cannot com um, kind of like reference at compile time, you're gonna have a different operation that's going on now of course we need our vector here uh, so let's quickly introduce our vector here with the name vec like that and we are going to have our vectors here now what i want to do quickly is i want to say a uh, method print so the method print is just going to quickly say for int uh, a or let's say int i in the vec so i'm just going to go through all of that let's of course make this a const reference because it should um, and then I want to quickly just stdc out the integer and I'm just going to do a uh, std handle. Or we could also just add a space. Maybe a space is better and then at the end we're going to go with a with an end line here. Just a quick uh, way of uh, printing an array, which is of course for our debug code something that I want to do. I want to print my array, which in this case is of course called ints. Now, uh, how do I now insert something into the array? Well, um, first of all, let's add the user input. So let's add a um, char uh, user. That's the user selection that's going to happen. And then we're going to do stdc in into the char in here. So there's a char that's inserted by the user. Maybe let's do a uh, quickly see out and say uh, what do you want question mark and there is of course a there is b and then there is x actually you gotta see why i have x in here in a second now basically what i want to now do is i want to extract some conditions so bool um, is a is going to be equal to the uh, user being equal to a or to the user being equal to x so if you're entering x i want to kind of like include both and this is now the whole example that i'm kind of like constructing to uh, show you what the power of the library is in terms of uh, not static initialization and then depending on if um, we are a 
I'm gonna call the user set A function and the same thing it also is going to happen for B. So now we have our simple code that initializes this array and then later on would we'll do some work with it. So now we need a way to assign these. Now how could we assign them? Well we can go and say plus equal. Alright this is a very um, easy way of assigning something. Actually no it doesn't even work. Um, that's interesting. Why do I not uh, be able to assign these? I think I need to really use pushback. Uh, five. So you cannot even say plus equal. I was thinking that this operator is actually implemented in the standard library. However, uh, it is not even as simple as that. Like plus equal is not even a thing in the standard library. Now we of course want to use a easy syntax. So what we are going to do is we're going to say using namespace uh, boost assign and as soon as we are using the namespace boost assign you can actually see that this operation of assigning a value of 5 to that array suddenly becomes available well basically because uh, boost implements that and even further boost allows you to chain these inserts together so you can actually say 5 comma 10. this comma here this comma tar, this is actually an operator in c++ the operator Comma. This is an operator and uh, yeah, it's basically uh, doing some magic around and forwarding and stuff uh, that basically allows you to insert something in this thing called tag. So there's stuff happening in the background here that we don't really need to understand, but comma is actually an operator which seems to be quite useful. So if the user said A, I want to include A values. What are A values? Well, uh, like a, I, I really see 1 as an A value, 3 and 5 as an A value and yeah. That's it. Now, what do we do when the uh, user uh, edits B? Well, we do three, four, and six. So a bit of odd and even number magic happening here. And yeah, there we go. And that's actually already everything that I want to do here. Let's quickly run this application and see uh, if it works. So uh, what to do, let's say A, we have 1, 3 and 5. Okay, maybe let's zoom a bit in so that you can see that a bit better. So I said A, so I got 1, 3 and 5. What happens if I do select uh, B? Uh, hello? Okay, now there we go. Uh, of course, get 2, 4 and 6. So you can see it's already working. Let's rerun this again. And now let's select X to get both values. If I select X and boom, you can see 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. And then we could do some algorithm with the array, order it or do anything with that STD vector. So in general, what this allows you, it's just allowing you to do it in a very, very expressive way, in a very expressive way to assign values. We could also start, of course, with that. So we can also even like initialize that to something, oops, <laughs> uh, to something like that. So plus equal, yeah, okay, of course this is now not working because boost the sign is missing. Um, but if we're adding it like that, we could, for example, add some initial bootstrap values of uh, 0 and 100. And of course, if we are running our application and we are entering our uh, code, it of course works. Now, of course, uh, you would probably have uh, a way to order the uh, list. This actually having boost algorithm that we used uh, previously. Um, algorithm uh, sort, sort subrange. We could sort something, but I think there's an STD sort. Is there an STD sort? I don't know. I, d I don't really... I mean, this is not the idea of the video series, but I do kind of like STD uh, sort. Uh, first and last. Yeah, maybe. Let's let's try it out. Uh, let's do a quick ins uh, begin uh, ins uh, dot end. A quick STD sort here uh, to just uh, make this nicer. I don't like the idea of having these unsorted, these values unsorted. Yeah, there we go. That looks nicer. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, don't ask me why I've done that, but yeah. That's how I want to have it. I want to have it a nice sort. So now basically we have written a quite expressive way of adding values. Of course, uh, we always can do pushbacks, right? There's, there's nothing stopping us from pushbacking us or there's nothing from creating another STD vector with int calling this like sub uh, vector, initializing that to some uh, initializer list and then iterating for uh, auto i in my uh, sub vector. Uh, 
the sub vector here and then doing something like vag dot pushback i this is of course always possible and the lines of code in the end is actually going to even be equal when using the using namespace convention but you can see that this code is kind of like cumbersome to look at and it doesn't really work and this is kind of like a feel of like really inserting what you want Okay, so now let's also talk about another very useful uh, inserting algorithm, and I'm gonna use and try to use the unordered map with that. Uh, unordered map, let's try this. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Let's use an unordered map, unordered map. So we have an unordered map. Uh, let's call this one map, just as simple as that. We're gonna have an unordered map that maps uh, ourselves integers to std strings. And we're gonna wanna use this as a lookup table. We wanna use this as a lookup table to translate so let's maybe give this a bit of a more meaningful name a lookup table from uh, like a month to string so we want to convert like a month to a string so like the the month in the in a year and what we can do with boost design is we can also give this uh, quite expressive uh, like initializer list um, it's I think not too um, too simple but we we can just try it out so if we are using these lookup month let's try this out i think uh, it's not as simple as that it's just like adding some values like that because this is like the idea that we want to do no it's not as simple as that what you actually need to do is you need to call the insert function the ins uh, insert function which is uh, kind of like defined by boost and if you are using that insert function you can uh, very expressively add something to there so um yeah, like, huh? where did the semicolon go? Uh, so we have, uh, uh, let's, I want to have this a bit short handed. So I want to have Januar, uh, three, four, uh, eight, uh, 12. So let's maybe say one, two, three, four, five, six. And maybe just let's do it up to six. You can have like get the idea what's going on. So yeah, you would just give it a short hand uh, of the of the kind of like expressive name, and then what you could do is you could ask the DC out. Uh, then you could look up a month for let's like, say the fifth month. I want to do a lookup, and then I want to do SCD uh, end. So you can just write some um, like expressive initialization code, and if I run that, you're gonna see that after of course fiddling around with the different stuff, you can see that the month is May. So yeah, let's maybe do something like auto or let's say month is equal to five so that we can say um, the month is so just some expressive tags to that so the fifth month is and then we're gonna get some information of course we could also um, quickly make this a bit more dynamic so maybe let's add something like std uh, see out the month and um, I want to quickly enter like the month's name so let's do an std see in to the month and then yeah this is uh, even a bit better code so if I now go in and say second month or first I say x and then I say second month and the second month is May yeah, because this is still hard coded, which is of course not what we should do if we are writing the NMAT code. Um, yeah, so let's do X and let's do the second month and the second month is the February. And then you kind of like get the idea, you can add even more values to that to that uh, unordered map. And yeah, as you can see, it worked with unordered maps. So I think like, um, I'm not sure how this this works. Why it was like like not defining the unordered map, but I think in uh, the boost design library, there's probably some template magic going on that for the map that was implemented in here. Um, list inserter config, and then it's including map. And I think it is somehow. I think an unordered map is just a special kind of map. Uh, to be honest. I think an unordered map is somehow defined with these KVCA, like key value um, comparator and um, 
allocator. I think this is the way it is. A key value comparator and allocator. I'm not sure of that. Let's maybe see. Maybe we can find something. Um, pointer. Uh, okay. P T P R. What is the P R? I don't know. It's an ordered red black with values and unique keys. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can see. There it is. Uh, key value compare allocator and basically a. Um, the unordered map is, as far as I'm concerned, just giving you like a null compare function. So an unordered map is basically just uh, a map with like a I don't care, um, an I don't care compare function. Uh, it doesn't seem like that, but at least they are somehow compatible. Don't ask me what, I am not the author of the standard library, but... It works, right? Don't go too much down the rabbit hole. I try to go down and match the rabbit hole now in this video for uh, explaining these, but don't do it. Just uh, see that it works and yeah, be fine with it. Um, okay, so yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video where we're gonna explore Boost Beast. That's kind of a beast library. I don't look forward to doing the video though, but I know how to use it but it's going to be hard to get it in a short video so then thank you for watching see you in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day bye